wrapped up this gold medal match here. A Marcio Valance to start this gold medal match here at the Telstra Dome in front of 50,000 fans, England and New Zealand. New Zealand never lost, have never been beaten in a sevens match. Great start here by Josh Blackie, down to within five metres of the line. Early opportunity here for New Zealand. Marcio Valance did everything but hang on to the ball, and they are really hitting the ground running the New Zealand team, but we will come back for the scrum. Just a point about the New Zealand lineup. No Sassini Anessi. And he is still not fully recovered from the knock he suffered in the quarterfinal against Canada earlier this morning. So Blackie, Valance, Messon, Ellison, Yoasa, Jane, and Raikambula. Lotte Raikambula coming in for Anessi. Here, the big chart of Kiwi here. I think there's more Australians than New, Ze New, Ze New Zealanders and Australians in the stadium here, and look at this. Well, there's one Boy. New Zealander who wish he wasn't there. Henry Paul yeah. of England, of course, born in New Zealand, but has played most of his rugby and international rugby, certainly in the colours of England. Just on the left-hand side of the screen there, but a real rough and tumble here, and probably a few worrying moments there for the coach of England, Mike Friday. So this New Zealand side really pumped up, there's no question about that. We've seen their ability, they've had to raise the intensity, but they just have to control their emotions here as well. And England be well aware of the need to absorb this early punch if they can. Big opportunity here for New Zealand, Valance. And the first try of the match comes to Corey Jane for New Zealand after just one minute. Just the start, Gordon Titchens and his bench wanted. Uh, Corey Jane has been a superb strike force for New Zealand throughout this tournament. Really didn't show much yesterday in the preliminary stages when New Zealand played Wales, Namibia and Kenya, but ever since then, he's been one of New Zealand's most potent weapons. He played a big hand on that win against Australia in the semi-final earlier this evening, and uh, quickly into the fray here in this final as well the try was uh, unconverted and the new zealand out to a 5-0 lead no, sorry no the conversion about to take place now the players already back at halfway most of the english players valance and marcio taking his time as he unfortunately for new zealand anyway hooks the ball away to the left and back to halfway we come well that try wasn't quite as uh, quickly taken as England's semi-final encounter with Fiji who scored after about 15 seconds of that game but certainly a significant strike there for the number 10 Corey Jane and for New Zealand from the restart Josh Blackie he's so competitive in the air but it's won by England their first real opportunity Tom Van Dell lurking on the outside here opportunity here for England here's this Playmaker again, Matthew Tate. Outstanding. Tate again. He has produced something out of nothing. This young 20-year-old. What a try. Brilliant is the only word. Didn't need Vandell. He didn't need Tom Vandell, one of the fastest men in world rugby. And Matthew Tate, who went to the same school as his club coach, Rob Andrew, at Newcastle Falcons. What are two people have said? He lacks pace. Well, you can't believe that, watching him stretch away from the New Zealand defence like that. He's the tournament's top try scorer. That is try number nine for Matthew Tate. And Simon Amor now with a very important conversion attempt. So England, bounce back in the best possible way. Let's just sit and watch and enjoy the wonderful skills here of Tate. He had a man outside of him, Vandell, didn't need him. And look, Valance had no chance as he swept by him with almost arrogant ease. I don't think it matters the result of this game. If this was an international rugby board tournament, he would certainly be voted man of the tournament so far. Absolutely superb by Tate. So what can New Zealand produce by way of a reply? Not forward by an English hand in the air. And so back we come for the scrum. Remember, uh, it's a 10-minute final, 20 minutes at least 
of rugby sevens here before we know where the gold medal will go. And let's not forget that England have won two tournaments this year. They beat Fiji both times in the final. New Zealand yet to reach a major final in the 2005-2006 season. Well, these curious scrum infringements which uh, referees have shown a proclivity for penalising teams for continues here. You do wonder about whether, in fact, there is a case to start penalising players when it's a three-man scrum, but anyway, New Zealand get the penalty. Another opportunity for Corey Jane across the far side of the field. New Zealand swing it one way, then the other. Very conventional, orthodox approach about their sevens here. Volant running and running and running. Just Blackie. This could be a high-scoring, spectacular gold medal match here. Magnificent try for New Zealand. We've seen three crackers in three minutes. New Zealand, of course, going for three titles in a row. And what uh, many onlookers may not realise is that since Rugby 7 aside was introduced into the Commonwealth Games in Kuala Lumpur in 1998, they are still undefeated. And that is an absolutely fabulous record. 16 from 16, New Zealand. They have never been beaten in the eight years of the Commonwealth Games 7. And uh, curiously enough, for Paul, I don't think they've ever met ever these two teams at any level of the Commonwealth Games. The first time England and New Zealand have met. In fact, England have never medalled at the Commonwealth Games. Balance. Pretty good attempt, but three points in it. Well, Josh Blackie of Otago and the Highlanders in the Super 14. He's big, he's around about six feet three inches tall, weighs in at 105 kilograms, and he absolutely powered his way over there. What a superb performance by Josh Blackie. The loss, it'll just get to the 10 metres, no. It's Blackie wasn't aware that it wasn't going to travel the full 10 metres, and uh, so he intercepted that kickoff, and so therefore England will have the free kick back on halfway. Gee, how the seven minutes is flowing. Just under three minutes of the first half left. New Zealand leading by just the three points. Two tries to one at the moment. Here he is again. Tate, he's got Vundell with him this time. And look at the pace of this man. New Zealanders will be well aware they have to close down Tom Vundell. I think Paul, I heard you say in an earlier match, Thank he's you. arguably the fastest man in rugby boots on the planet. Well, that's not me saying that. That was Gordon Titchens after Van Dell's seven-a-side debut for England in Dubai in December. And uh, Titchens, of course, the coach of New Zealand, and I believe every word he says is very knowledgeable. Uh, possibly the most knowledgeable man on the planet about seven-a-side rugby. Well, I think the try he scored against Australia here, what, uh, 24 hours ago, probably was the most spectacular try we've seen here in 42 matches. Meanwhile, uh, the referee decides he's going to have a word with one of the New Zealanders. Captain's the one I want you to, Captain. Make sure you're not raising your forearm in attack, OK? Giving you the benefit of the doubt here and penalising only. Do not raise your forearm in attack. Just suggesting there to Liam Messam, just watch with their high forearm, bang, you see that? Yeah, that's fair enough too. Play continues. Right, Gambula. Valance, he seems to be in everything at the moment. Valance, and look at him again, he shadows his way through the gap, slips through like a ghost up to the 22. How this New Zealand side have really relied on Valance in this tournament. He only came in as a replacement for Doug Howlett. And uh, just as savvy, his experience, his years, his ability to read the game. I was about to say, he really is the Serevi of uh, New Zealand rugby and has been for some time. And that is young David Seymour of Saracens and certainly has been one of the rising stars of this England squad. Once again, a discussion between the assistant referee and the referee about an infringement there. He did give a penalty to England, but that was then reversed just outside the 22. Did you get a number, Dan? Thank you. No number? No number? Okay. Well, in you. fact, the penalty does look as though it has been given to England. So Simon Amor trying to construct something here for England. Dangerous tackle was the call. That's what the penalty was for against one of the New Zealanders. Not 
forward by New Zealand as Liam Messon couldn't control it anyway. And uh, these last 90 seconds before half time can be so decisive in the outcome of these matches. And New Zealand know that they could nail another try here. It would be a major advantage going into the second half. Here's the New Zealand bench on this uh, cool evening here with the roof over still. 50,000 people, tremendous atmosphere here. Sevens has really come of age as a Commonwealth game. Scott Fundell, let's see what he can do. But the New Zealanders know they have to close him down. And the penalty against Fundell didn't release the ball. Taken by Comedy Ellison. Raikam Thulis, the Fiji and New Zealander. How sweet is that? The Fiji in presence in the final after all. Sweet for Tom Farndell. We've been talking about the pace that Farndell has, but Reichen Buller there absolutely sped through the English defence. Slightly winded, I think, by the fact that uh, he had Farndell on top of him, the ball underneath him. And he'll recover from that, and that is a decisive score. You're talking about decisive scores before. Just before half time is exactly the right time to get the extra five points. And Reichen Buller. His first try in this final and the half-time hooter has gone the kick is still to come but now it's all about how quickly England can gather momentum in the second half and whether they can recover to strike back at New Zealand sliced away by the lance but New Zealand out beyond the seven point margin at half-time 15 to 7 four tries three to New Zealand and one to England and Raikambola, who's in the starting lineup for Sassini Anisi, who was uh, injured earlier today in the match against Canada, and uh, was real concern in the New Zealand camp that Anisi, who has become such an instrumental and influential member of this New Zealand team here in uh, Melbourne, and his presence would be missed. Well, I think that wonderful try there from Raikambola shows that New Zealand have more than an adequate replacement in the Fijian-born utility back out of Wellington. Friday there asking for decisive hitting in the tackle and then spread it wide he knows he's got pace in those backs particularly of course with young Matthew Tate the tournament's top try scorer and of course with Tom Vondell who's yet to come alive in this final there's the New Zealand captain interesting uh, tactical approach here from New Zealand uh, Paul it seems to me they're willing to run the ball more in this match at the same time they're not prepared to compromise on this very strong defensive pattern they have but what about the difference between New Zealand on day one and the New Zealand we're seeing here on day two it just seems as though they've got a different psychology as we watch Matthew Tate outspeed the uh, New Zealand defense and Amasio Valance there but New Zealand that we're seeing in this final are a different class than they were yesterday 24 hours ago and Josh Blackie there's no way he was going to be pulled back scoring the second try for New Zealand and a lovely little shimmy there in and out from uh, Rakambula crashing over the line for the try right on the stroke of half time and uh, New Zealand with an eight point lead playing with a lot of confidence and fluency here but the job is only half done in England as they showed last night against Australia uh, they are a side that can strike very quickly and very powerfully right in the last minute if need be well, they've got a slight problem here Corey Jane Try scorer in the first half coming off for a blood replacement. Hasn't recovered from a knock that he took uh, late on in the first half. So Nigel Hunt has come on for New Zealand out here on the left wing, number nine, Nigel Hunt from Wellington. Eric Rush uh, supervising the attention there to uh, Corey Jane as England restart this gold medal match, the final of the sevens here in Melbourne. And certainly that was well taken by David Seymour who's very quick to pounce on the knockback there by New Zealand at the restart but uh, New Zealand will have the throw in at the line out halfway between the 10 meter line and 22 up goes the tall figure of Rakambula but he lost it in the air and England with a very good opportunity here deep inside the New Zealand half away goes Tate on one of his sorties this time two New Zealanders over the top of him 
and they'll get the penalty. Not releasing the ball, a pretty tough call there on Tate. He really didn't have much opportunity to release it. As soon as he hit the ground, the whistle went. Valence pops a little pass, but a bit of a hospital pass to Riken Buller. The English arrive on mess on the New Zealander. Lost forward by New Zealand. There's a real sense of urgency about the English here. I think they sense, Paul, they have to score first here in the second half. And they certainly have. Once again, it was pressured by the man in the picture there, David Seymour, that uh, created a chance for the scrummage. And we're having a replacement here early on in this second half. And uh, Andrew, Ben Russell. Andrew Vilk, I think, has come on number eight. Into the, immediately into that scrum for England. And the Matthew Tate way out here close to the touchline as Vandell comes back. Trying something different. Vandell, it's not a bad little kick either. If the bounce is kind, but Valance everywhere he, they need him. Pops a mask over lunch. Now some room again for Tate. Matthew Tate. Will he go all the way on his own? Down within two metres of the line. Big chance here for England. And yes. He's only been on the field 30 seconds. But Andrew Vilk has dragged England back into this gold medal match. 15 to 12 with the kick to come. Oh, that was a great score by Andrew Vilk of Northampton Saints and formerly of Loughborough University. It uh, really does give Simon Amor a great chance here and a great psychological boost for the whole of the England side. I thought that was sliced, but it wasn't. It is two points for Amor, an extra two points for England. And now this gold medal match in the Commonwealth Games just has a single point between the two teams. New Zealand leading by 15 points to 14. And Andrew Bill will not score as important a try as that one for many years to come. But again, Nepal, a lot of the kudos for that English try goes to the man wearing the number 12 jersey, Matthew Tate. As he eluded the New Zealand defenders, got down to within 10 metres of the line and presented a very good ball. And then could have gone either way and built uh, in the end scoring the try for England so three tries to two so far another elementary mistake this time by the English from the restart we saw Valence do it in the first half of New Zealand to be fair I think that is about the first uh, restart that has gone wrong for Simon Amor in the course of the whole competition the New Zealand captain Yoasa Valence Backwards, backwards. Backwards, says the referee. That was the direction the ball went as Liam Messon. Up to the 22 and over goes Messon. Josh Blackie there with him as well. New Zealand want quick ball here and they've got it. Raikam Buller again. Cross the far side to Josh Blackie. England being penalised, holding the man down, says the referee, Mr Leckie. And Yuasa, good opportunity here for New Zealand. Three minutes into the second half, seven minutes of the match still remaining. Valence. No, Valence going all the way on his own. Unmarked up there is Liam Messon. New Zealand get another try. The seesaw match swings another direction. Well, in the course of this second half, first of all, it was England who took the initiative. They struck back hard, but that is another decisive score by New Zealand. So he has brought the Telstra Dome to its feet. And Liam Messam has been one of the most valuable members of the squad during this Commonwealth Games competition, quietly confident that he always seems to be there or thereabouts. And that certainly was a good five points. But there is a problem for New Zealand. Massimo Valance down on the deck, and he's definitely got a problem with his ankle. And this would be a blow for the men in black. His um, immediate concern is the conversion, and I see uh, Tamati Ellison has gone over as we look at again Valance as he read it superbly. He, the English allowed him to run, and it allowed him to put this man in for the trial, Liam Messon. And it looks as if it is, in fact, uh, Tamati Ellison taking the conversion attempt from out wide, and it's over. Well, who needs a Massio Valance when you've got a substitute who can kick like that? And Valance, I think, just seemed to be limping a little bit, but he released a superb pass to Liam Messam of Waikato. 
and a tremendous score and how significant might that conversion be New Zealand again out beyond the seven point margin as it pops up beautifully for Josh Blackie he's got Messam out to his left Blackie oh one powerful friend and Josh Blackie puts another nail in the English coffin 27 to 14 Two tries in the final for the tough, flinty man from Otago, Josh Blackie. Interesting to see that both the England speed men, Tom Van Dell and Richard Horton, both on the bench now. And Ben Gollings has just come on, one of the highest uh, scorers of all time in seven-a-side rugby. And all he had to try and do there was tackle Josh Blackie, and he couldn't do it. And that is another brilliant kick by New Zealand. My goodness, they've really come alive in the last few minutes. And that is a big scoreline now for New Zealand. Heading towards the gold medal, they're leading by 29 points to 14. And Ben Golling's first job on the park was to try and tackle the giant and very, very quick Josh Blackie. Yoasa all lining up. Magnus Lund from the start. And sneaking down the short side now, it could open up here for, for England. Simon Amor. But uh, he saw the lance coming across and decided to prop and change direction. And it's desperation time here now for England. Three minutes and 40 seconds, and they're uh, 15 points behind. Can they conjure up three tries in literally three minutes? Well, Henry Paul there, putting the man in the picture there, Ben Gollings, under a lot of pressure. He just flicked a pass out to him. Didn't go the right way, but uh, New Zealand have uh, been penalised there. Free kick for Simon Amor for not retreating fast enough, so away go England once more. Matthew Tate, but look at the New Zealanders swarming over Tate. They know he is the danger man in this English side. Amor. Right on halfway in centre field. The English knock on, the New Zealanders with that little applause, realising the good work their teammates had done and as the English bench up on their feet. Well, unfortunately, once again, it was uh, Ben Gollings and Henry Paul involved in that knock on. So things not going at all England's way at the moment. Continued pressure by New Zealand under three minutes to go and the gap means that england have to score three times to get back in this game as we see the new zealand substitute come on nigel hunt being accompanied there by one of the all-time greats in new zealand rugby eric rush of course the winning captain in manchester four years ago gee there's been a high injury count in this match it has been a war of attrition out there new zealand who place so much importance on the physical side of their game but England ready for it tonight as well. Valance. Still not happy with the bind, uh, says James Lecky. And another scrum penalty. Two and a half minutes left. New Zealand by 15. Magnus Lund. England are throwing the ball around, but to be perfectly honest, they're not making much impression up the field, are they? New Zealand is absolutely there to nail every time a pass is made. Still on the 10-metre line. Seymour. Back inside to Tate. Still there for England. Just unrelenting defence here from New Zealand. As Lund again flings the ball to Henry Paul. He's got Seymour outside of him. Loses contact with Seymour. One here and one over the other side. This is the best. I have to say, this is like a huge black blanket that's been thrown across the pitch. The tackles are absolutely raining in on England at the moment. Just choking the life out of this English team. So they try something different. A little chip, but it's covered, is it? No, that will be a try, I'm sure. Time out, He's asked for time out. I'm sure he got contact with the ball there, Simon A. Moore. Not forward by White, Black No, he's called it a knock-on. Well, let's have a look at this again. 
Well, I don't know. That was a 50-50 call. I guess you could argue that uh, he only had fleeting contact with the ball when it hit the ground. I think if you are an English supporter, you would have to say unlucky. If you're supporting New Zealand, you say that uh, England got just reward there. And New Zealand will have the put in. So this has got to be an almighty show uh, by the prop forwards in particular. Magnus Lund and David Seymour. Lund on this side, Seymour on the far side. And you could expect nothing less than 100% now. Again, he's not happy with that fighting of Josh Blackie. And for the third time, he's penalised him. Well, I think that's slightly farcical, isn't it? You know, when you start getting technical about binding in a three-man scrum and dishing out penalties. I think there's uh, a bit of ill-discipline by one of the coolest men on the pitch normally there, the England captain, Simon Amor. Send a wild pass out, and that put uh, the whole of his England team under a little bit of pressure. 29 points to 14, and less than 30 seconds to go. You have to say at this point, the gold medal is going down to New Zealand for the third time in a row, but uh, England might have something to say about it at the last minute. Goings gets there, but one suspects it might be too little too late. But England fighting to the end. A New Zealand player is down, lying on the ground, and a quick conversion by England. They still believe they can win this match. Interesting that Gollings, one of the most prolific scorers in an England shirt, has not been given very much pitch time in the course of the last two days, but that is the sort of quality move he can create. But the hooter has gone, so it won't matter. It'll go into touch. The referee's whistle indicates it is all over. And this extraordinary reign of New Zealand at the Commonwealth Games continues. Victors in Victoria, gold medalists for the third time in eight years. And this might just be Gordon Titchen's finest hour at his greatest triumph. Well, 29 think, to 21. I think it's generally considered that Titchens is the master of coaching seven aside rugby, and he has proved it yet again. There he is coming into the picture.